Welcome to Talk Tantra to Me. It is such an honor to be holding space for this divine knowledge to make its way into your ears and lifestyle. Today, I talk Tantra with Amber Valdez. She is a spiritual guide and business mentor. I am so grateful for her content and so appreciative that she is here on the podcast to offer her perspective on living an expansive life. So thank you for being here, Amber. Why don't you start by telling us a bit about your journey with spirituality and coaching lightworkers and, and things like that? Yes. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you everybody for taking time out of your precious moments of your sacred life to join us today. And I, I want you to know it's going to be juicy. You're going to leave feeling really expanded and excited and inspired. So yeah, my name is Amber Valdez. I'm a former NFL cheerleader, reality star, and TV host that thought that was cool and all. Um, but my real mission on this planet is to light a million souls on fire and to be the wind beneath the wings of the 144,000 light workers. Um, I currently coach and mentor um, light workers to come out of the spiritual closet, to step into their divine soul assignment um, and to activate their light and shine it bright out into the world. So all those that need their medicine, their inspiration and their gifts can find them. Um, I grew up, you know, on food stamps in a super abusive home with a mentally ill mother and an addict of a father who later becomes sober, but, but generally raised by a single mom um, you know, on free lunches. And there was a lot of abuse in my house, not a lot of stability. So I looked to, um, being a cheerleader for others. And I really truly believe that cheerleading saved my life. It was a way for me to pretend that the abuse wasn't as bad as it was at home and to really find joy in supporting other people. And so from a very young age, I was always got really excited about seeing people win and seeing people do well. And, um, ended up kind of finding my way to a video camera and a VHS tape. And then later on in high school, ended up being the host of my new show. And then after graduating high school and cheering for the NFL and manifesting that experience, that's really when I started having around that time, my spiritual awakening, uh, the book, you can heal your life literally flew off the shelf when I was 19 years old in a metaphysical bookstore in Seattle. And it really started me to get grasp the whole concept of us creating our reality and the words we think and the thoughts we speak create our reality, which is not something I was taught in my family, but was something that I had seen physical results of like the blessings that happened in my life. If I would just really kind of obsess or think about something long enough, it would happen. Um, I grew up with a father who taught me about angels and crystals and got my first crystal at 11 and learned about light and entities and the Illuminati and, and aliens and all this stuff. And so I was very privy to all these things. Um, But it wasn't really until I went through my dark night of soul journey while living in Hollywood, chasing the dream of being famous, looking for my worth in all the wrong places, Um, abusive relationship after abusive relationship with drug addicts and drug dealers and um, sex addicts that I found myself really um, not wanting to be on TV anymore. I came off the set of a show on ABC Family that I was bullied on, which activated all being bullied in high school and being bullied as a cheerleader. And it activated all my wounding with my boyfriend at the time, finding out he was having sex with strangers, literally like hooking up with girls that worked at the in and out drive through that all the pain of my dad leaving got activated. So it was a recipe for some deep, deep shadow work in a deep, uh, dark night of the soul. And in that experience, I realized I didn't want to be on TV anymore. I walked off the set of E! News on my fifth callback, which is like your fifth interview, which pretty much means you have it. And I listened to this voice that came in my head and said, we're done here. And I walked off the set. My dream was dead. I didn't want to be on TV anymore. My dad was dead and my relationship was dead. And I always found myself suicidal. And that night, my plan was to go home and drink it and eat, drink, excuse me, swallow an entire bottle of Costco size and equal PM and end it all. And a friend of mine was doing a meditation on the beach in Santa Monica, and they were doing a meditation for people who needed this training that was happening the very next day. And she wrote my hand and wrote my name in the sand at seven o'clock in the morning at the same exact time that I was basically having my out of body experience, um, on the set of that news channel. And the rest is history. She, she hiked running Canyon with me in flip-flops enrolled me into this training, um, drinking margaritas at 11 AM on a Tuesday at El Compadre on sunset. And from that place, I found my worth. I learned to love myself and I made a vow to pay forward everything that I had learned and really started to embody the turning my mess into my message and the pain into my purpose. And it was from that space of really having that deep, dark night of the soul that, um, the Phoenix rose and I, I became reborn and I went from eating at the dollar store to, uh, for groceries to 
a video broadcast I did trending on Periscope, which was a live video broadcasting platform before Instagram Live and Facebook Live were even a thing. And I went from 700 followers to 10,000 overnight night and trended on Twitter. And all of a sudden I had a coaching business where I was teaching people meditation and law of attraction and manifestation and morning ritual. And I really got to just pay forward what I learned. And I learned through vulnerability and authenticity and not giving a fuck about what people think and really showing it all, not just my stupid fucking highlight reel, which was what I grew up on, right? As a cheerleader, you put on a fucking fake smile and everything was miserable at home. I was dying inside and, you know, putting on a smile, you know, on the set of these enter entertainment carpets, interviewing Hugh Jackman to Sandra Bullock, but really just had an eating disorder and was miserable and hated myself in my life. It was this whole wearing this mask that just had to come off. And I started really embodying my shadow and, and owning my past and being a raver and throwing EDM festivals and, you know, traveling on the world and getting wasted and, and taking mass amounts of ecstasy and, and having this like crazy lifestyle that I thought people wouldn't want to work with me or wouldn't want to coach with me if they knew about my childhood or my past or knew my dad was a heroin addict or knew, you know, that I sat on 28 garbage bags of weed on Christmas Eve with my ex drug dealer boyfriend at 19, like stole like all these things that I was so scared of like letting people know who I truly was. And I really found out that that was my superpower. And that video went viral. And all of a sudden I had respect and I had street credit and people were like, I don't want to coach with someone else who has all their shit together. I want to coach with a girl that's really raw and vulnerable. And so since then I've been embodying leaders to own their shadow and to share all of themselves, the good, the bad, the light, the dark, and recognizing that we have equal sides of both. And it's been a really powerful journey to support light workers and, and first of all, knowing they fucking matter and, and their mission matters and their light matters and teaching them how to turn their pain into their purpose and to transmute and go from, you know, a light worker in training, which is a victim as I was for so long. Why have these men doing this to me? Why is my mom doing this to me? Why are these guys cheating on me? Blah, blah, blah. And really turning that into going like, Oh shit. Like this is my spiritual curriculum. Like this is my medicine. And everything that I went through, I can now transmute and pay it forward. So others, hopefully I can alleviate them from unnecessary pain and suffering that I had to go through. So I'm going to pause there and, and, and let you jump in. Cause I could go all day. Um, but thank you guys for listening and thank you for being here. Yeah. I appreciate the breadth of that story and, and the authenticity and vulnerability. It is super relatable and definitely something that um, inspires people to show up to see that you can have this transform transformational journey, regardless of, of your past. And in fact, your past is kind of the rocket fuel to get you, um, into, into the light work, which is really beautiful. And when you, the, one of the first things that you said was light and like this purpose of lighting a million souls on fire or something like that. You can say it again if you'd like, but I just felt my throat chakra go like, ah! and I just feel like you have this beautiful activating voice. And I love to speak more into that because I feel like there's so much fear right now about speaking your truth. And, and I'd love for you to speak more into that actually. Oh my God. I'm so glad you asked that. And thank you for that affirming, you know, that's, I used to say that a lot when I first started my business, you know, eight years ago, I used to be like, I'm here to light one million souls on fire. And I used to really fire people up. And I think I get to keep saying that again, because, you know, you go through your faces, but yeah. So being a cheerleader, right. It's like all coming full circle. It's like, you know, screaming at the top of your lungs, like you can do it. You know, if you think about a cheerleader, it's like someone that's like believes in you oftentimes before you believe in yourself. And I think a big part of like spirit kind of putting me through that cheerleader training, right. was to get me prepared. Yes. Cheer on the football team, but I can't tell you how long it's been since I've watched a fucking football game, but no, not judging anyone who does. I'm just saying that was such a big part of my life for so yeah. long. I like live for that. Now I got shit to do. I got souls to light on fire, right? Like there's more, there's more people I need to cheer on than just people who are playing sports. But, um, you know, we're coming upon a time. We are a part of a time in great history, history, which is the ascension, right? It's the, it's the remembrance. It's the awakening. It's the great awakening is what we fucking came here for. And, you know, it's not a dress rehearsal guys. And I think it's, it's, and I, I'm dating myself. I'm 42 years young, but I grew up and, and lit, loved a movie called the never ending story. And I'm sure your audience has watched it, but you have it. It's a cult flick. You have to watch it. 
And the short of the story of the never ending story is there's this little boy basically who's reading the story and going along the journey. And the whole time he's the one who can save the princess. He's the one who can save the planet. And he's like, me, like me, like I'm the one who's going to save you. Like if I do the thing and that's, that's you, that's us, that's me. That's all of us. Like we are that little boy. Like we are here to save the planet. And if we are not living our best life, i.e. getting paid abundantly for doing what we love, paying forward our gifts, whatever those gifts are spiritual or not, whether it's baking cakes or saving the whales, like it matters not. If you are not doing that thing that lights your soul on fire, then we're all suffering. And a big part of that is going through this activation of a remembering you fucking matter. Your purpose matters. Your light matters. Remembering that you came on this planet with a unique soul assignment, just like your fingerprint. Uh, There's only one. You have a soul contract. You have a QR code and you came onto this blue earth, this blue planet to do something. You didn't just come down here to suck air and buy stuff, right? Like needless to say, you actually came here to do some things and to make an impact. And there's this remembrance that has to happen first of being like, okay, I know I came here to do something. And our whole life is kind of going to figure that thing out. And I remember being 35 years young until my purpose finally stepped in or excuse me, 35 years years young when my purpose finally stepped in. I thought it was to be a TV host, right? That's what I wanted my whole fucking life. And then all of a sudden I'm close to it. Like, and all of a sudden I don't want it anymore. Right. And it was traumatizing because it's like, but this is all I've ever wanted since I was 16. So what, like 15 years, that's all I wanted. That's that, that was it. And then I get it and then I don't want it anymore. So what's the point of life? Right. So we, we come through our mom's womb, we forget. And then we come out and we're like doing all the things, but you guys, every little thing that we've done along the way is preparing us. Like being on TV is now preparing me to teach people, you know, I have a live video course to be, teach people to be vulnerable, and authentic, and stop giving a fuck what Sally from high school thinks. Right. Like It's all a part of the tools in my toolbox and everything you've gone through from your pain and your suffering, most definitely through the training and the skills, it all molds into a part of who you are. So as we go through this ascension and we go through this great awakening, it's this getting out of our heads of, I got to work hard for my money, but I have bills to pay, but I went to college for this stupid piece of paper. Like what would my parents think if I don't fucking do the thing? And then it's like throwing all that shit out the, out the door and owning your voice and speaking your truth from the top of the mountain and shining your light, like the lighthouse you are right. The lighthouse is standing on the edge of the cliff. And it's not like, well, you're a small boat or your boat's too big. I'm not going to shine on you. I'm only going to shine a little on you, but that's what we do as humans. We pick and choose who gets to see our light, whether it's just our inner circle or our best friends or a small little audience or our neighbors, or we, we, we dim our light depending on who we're around because of the matrix, because of society, because of the lack of self-worth, because of the fear of being seen and judged for all the years we were burned at the stake. Hey, where my witches and wizards at? Like I get it, but now is the time where we must shine. We must raise our voices and no offense. We're being forced into it. We're being forced into it here in Texas with this new abortion law. Yeah. We're being forced into it with black lives matter and me too. And the, everything that's coming down the pipe with the, you know, what's and the, you must get this and you can't travel here and this and that it's like the collective is being forced into a massive voice activation into a throat chakra opening into an initiation. And we cannot get to heaven on earth. We cannot get to 5d consciousness, heart-based consciousness until we go through our throat, which is the fourth dimension. And so that is why it's so important now more than ever, that if you do not like what's going on the planet, you must speak up. Like you must speak into the injustice that we're seeing on the planet. That's your initiation. It's the collective's initiation. And we can't ascend until we all step in and own our voices fully wholeheartedly and, and be willing to die literally for it. Yeah, absolutely. I like to say that our highest truth is in resonance with our highest love. So if you're sharing your highest truth, you're not going to hurt someone's soul. You might hurt their ego or you might hurt their human. But in fact, if you're triggering them, if they're having a a triggering reaction, that's actually their initiation. That's their, you know, that's their reaction and and you're in, and you're in your highest love. So own it, you know, um, that being said, I love that you were touching on this piece about, 
um, owning, owning your journey and also owning your responsibility in this place. Because I feel like when I first started working in the healing modalities, um, specifically with sacred sexuality and Tantra, I had this whole imposter syndrome of who am I to, you know, be teaching this, let alone, I've been doing this for lifetimes, but like, who am I, you know, right. And then, then it became very clear though. No, 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 no. This is your duty to show up. It's your duty. Um, and, uh, and that kind of was what motivated me to really step into it and to start being super, um, more, you know, outward facing with, with my work, because for years I was kind of only, you know, getting, um, referrals essentially. And then I started the podcast when I really started to own, own that. Uh, but I, I would love to hear more about what you think people should do if they feel like their light is being encroached upon, or they're feeling that sense of judgment or, or rejection from people in their circle. Mm, So good. And thank you for stepping into your duty because it is selfish for you not to. And I always say this to my students, my clients, like, who are you not to, right? Like you, you're gifted these gifts, this fire, this passion for a reason. Don't waste it. Like I was on a sales call today with a a potential mastermind student. I said, girl, you've got Reiki. You've got like this body talk therapy. You've got this like NLP. I was just rattling off all the certifications that she has. And I was like, you do realize that there are people suffering immensely right now that need this medicine you have. And by you sitting there fucking around, that's what I said to her and wasting your time at that job that you hate, by the way, that you're miserable at, that's capping you, telling you what you're worthy of, oh. paid, right? Like she's in the matrix. It's like, she's got one foot in the matrix and she's got one foot out. And she's like, yeah, but what if I don't make money? It's like, how is that possible? Like, how is it? You've been making money for the man. You've been making money for others. Like, how can you actually not make money doing the thing that lights your fucking soul up? Like, listen to how crazy that sounds. And I believe when you're doing God, goddess, I am sources work, you'll never be broke. Like yeah. when you're living your purpose, you'll never be broke, but we get broke. I eat mentally broke, emotionally broke, spiritually broke and financially broke when we are doing whatever it takes to avoid our soul's assignment, i.e. you and your Tantra and your gifts. And like this imposter, this, this story that because you didn't go to college and get a fucking piece of paper, right? Like that's how deep the matrix engraves us into the slavery mentality. First of all, college is a business. Colleges are businesses that manipulate you into thinking that you have to come here to be worthy. And then you have to get a piece of paper and then they enrolled everybody to buy into that. So then these businesses are constantly making so much money to give a piece of paper to people who will probably never even use it. And then all of a sudden you're taking all the free moments of your life, studying Tantra, like a crazy person. So you probably know more than you probably ever learned in college because you're obsessed with it and it lights you up and you've done it every lifetime. And then all of a sudden you're like, but I'm not qualified. Like, (laughs) Like it's crazy. Like people can give a certification for anything nowadays. Like, and there's actually like, no, anyway, that's a whole other tangent. So what do you do when people are talking smack? What do you do when people are talking smack? Well, first of all, you get a new, you get a new community. Like, so just to give you guys some context, my mom, my sister, my family, they don't get it. Half of the family is Bible, Bible thumpers. I'm not judging it. I grew up Catholic turned Christian. Me and JC are down mother, Mary, Mary Magdalene. Those are my homies, Archangel Michael, and not in the contracts constructs of the church. Not that I'm going to hell and I'm dying for my sins and there's no hell and there's no devil. And that's what I believe, right? My family thinks I'm a devil worshiper most days, or they think that I'm in the occult, which is really funny. Um, and I'm like, no, no auntie, I'm not worshiping the devil. I'm a light worker. I'm here to shine light into the world and remind people they are loved and they matter and they're worthy and their purpose matters. (laughs) Like, no. Right. But there was a time where I desperately needed their approval. Mm -hmm. And for some of the listeners who are listening right now, probably there's a part of you that still needs mommy and daddy's approval and wants your sister's approval and Sally from high school's approval and the church's approval and the government's approval and your neighborhood go down the list, right? Mm -hmm. That's where you start. You start with asking your question, whose approval do I need right now? Whose approval am I waiting for in order to do the thing? And if my mom and my dad or my husband or whoever it is, is not approving you said you should go do the thing. Would you do it? And if the answer is yes, then do the thing because that is your truth. Okay. So 
First of all, stop looking for approval outside of yourself. I did a video the other day um, sharing my abortion stories. Mm -hmm. And I woke up that day and I was all fired up about what happened. There's just this crazy law in Texas right now that I know is not going to stay. I'm affirming, declaring, and demanding a lot. And I remember being like, I have to do a video. And I just pushed live. I didn't wake up thinking, I didn't go to bed that night thinking like, I'm going to share about my abortions publicly. I actually never thought in a million years I would share my, my abortions publicly. Why did I choose that? I chose that because I'm no longer going to be feeling shame for my choices. And I want to be a stand for other people to not be ashamed of their choices. And I want to shed some light upon the beliefs of people who that have about abortion. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's my duty. And that's all of our duty as light workers. And if you don't have, I didn't have a vulnerability hangover after that. I was like, I don't care if I get a thousand baby killer comments on my Instagram, I'm going to delete and block them all. And I'm going to move on with my day. Right. And I'm at that level now. And if you're like, damn, right. If you think about sharing that, it's like one of the things that's like, hush, hush, don't tell anyone that that happened to you or you chose that because you're going to be into the blank. The church says a horrible person or whatever it is, but I've removed myself so much from needing the approval of anyone except the G O D E S S I am who I answer to that. I honestly don't even care if my friends are like, yo, I can't even believe you did that. First of all, that's not my crew. They'd be like, hell yeah, you did that. Right. Because we don't buy into the shame construct. The shame construct was just keeping us all stuck, right, in the matrix. And so if your family and friends don't agree with you, good. And if you're a true light worker, they probably won't, because that's a part of your initiation is to release the need for approval and release the need to give zero fucks about what Sally from high school thinks. And realize that if you're you died tomorrow, would you be like, hell yeah, that was a great ride? Or would you be like, man, I really fucking blew it? And you, that day is going to come for every single one of us. As my friend Brianna Lynn says, no one's getting out of here alive. So that day is going to come and it's going to come sooner than you know. And you're going to be faced with asking yourself when you do your life review, wow, I wish I would have listened to my mom, my dad, my husband, my friends more. Or you're going to say, man, I really wish I would have done what I wanted to do. Quit that stupid job that was sucking me of my life force energy and did the thing. Because this is a simulation, this experience, this human experience is a game. It's a hum, it's a simulation. It's a choose your own adventure. And so if you are still caught up in the, in the approval seeking and, and, and feeling, I need everyone to be on board. Look at some of the greatest leaders of our time. I'm pretty sure that MLK and Rosa Parks and anyone else who took a stand didn't have a lot of fans mm -hmm. and light workers arrows. But you know what? Soon enough, you don't take that many arrows because you start having more freaking tribe. Like that video has got almost 9,000 views right now. And it's got all love. Like I can count on my two hands how many hater comments I got. Right. It's not because what I didn't say is confronting. It's because that's my people. Mm. Like that's my tribe. And I spoke from my heart and I spoke with conviction. And people were like, damn, like you really broke it down but I did it through my story, right? I did it through my experience of realizing that that was the choice I needed to make for me because I didn't want to raise another kid on welfare. If you guys remember the beginning of this program, I grew up on food stamps and welfare. I grew up with a mom that told me every day she didn't want us, right? And we were a burden and we were, she was broke because of us. Why would I want to perpetuate the cycle and have a child with a drug addict, drug dealer like my mom did, right? And I chose what was right for me powerfully in that moment because I wanted to break that cycle. I didn't want to bring another child in the world that grew up like that. And that, that I am proud of because that was what was best for me. And so I spoke from I, I spoke from my experience and I created an understanding of empathy and compassion for those that are like, you shouldn't do that. It's like, okay, are you going to take that child in? Are you going to pay for their college? Are you going to pay for their food? Are you going to pay for their therapy? Oh, well, there's fosters. No, there's really not very many fosters. Have you fostered? Cause I worked in the foster system. And let me tell you something. Most of those kids that are in the foster system have mom or dads or both that are addicts or dead. They don't have any love. And at 18 years old, they're out on the streets and they're either hooking it or addicted to drugs or living on the streets. And these are the things that people don't consider. And so I shared some of these valuable points of real talk because we all have judgment about other people until we walk in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And so 
you get to pave your own way and you get to know that you came on this planet for you to execute your contract and your soul assignment. And you're either out of integrity with that or you're not. And if you don't know what your soul assignment is, you get to stop everything and get it, get it figured out pretty quick because we're all on borrowed time if we're not, but that is a part of the initiation, right? It's like people not getting it in high school, my family, not getting it. My boyfriend's not getting it. Like others not getting it and being like, literally people telling me like, that's crazy, which is why I created the first program, turn your crazy into your purpose. Cause I was called crazy more times than I could count. Right. But it's the crazy people like Steve Jobs says that think they can change the world that actually do. So if people around you don't get it and you're the black sheep, boy, do I feel you. And that means you're probably a light worker. Yeah. I feel like this is a great transition into, you know, the question of how do you know if you are a light worker? And I think that it's really important that we we're coming from this question that it's saying, you know, moving away from looking for, from val- for validation and acceptance from outside of yourself. And so how then with that being said, how do we go into this question of how do you know if you're a light worker? Yeah. So I have a quiz, um, which I'm sure will be in the show notes, but I have two quizzes. I have a, are you a light worker quiz? Um, which spirit told me to do a few years ago. And then recently I created a light worker archetype quiz. So you're a light worker. Now what kind of quiz, right? Like, well, what kind of light worker am I? Right. Um, cause there's all different kinds of light workers, right. And a light worker is literally someone who is in, in the nutshell is here to shine their light out into the world. Right. And they can be in corporate America. They can be stay at home moms. They can be, you know, neighborhood watch, like anybody that wants to make a difference and bring more love and light into the planet, um, is a light worker. And, and they don't have to act a certain way, walk a certain way, talk a certain way. They don't have to be gouged in fucking crystals and like wearing white and never cussing. Um, you know, light workers are literally embodiments of the light and they're the type of people that you get around and you just feel better around them. Like they give a shit about others, animals, the planet, humanity. They have deep, deep hearts. They care deeply for the world. They're probably empaths. And they feel this strong urge that they need to do something, right? Like that they need to help, right? And there are light workers that are in government and in leadership. There are light workers that, you know, are work with the earth, you know, like doulas and, um, you know, witches that, you know, are herbalists or acupuncturists or, you know, and there are light workers that are like you are like a sensuality mystic, right? Like you're here to like activate pleasure and love and sensuality into the planet and have people embody, right. Their God goddess powers. And, and, you know, there's, there's an earth warrior, there's a light warrior, there's, um, a priest or priestess of magic. That's like, you know, very called to Celtic, Celtic traditions and magic. And there's, um, yeah, there's, I think I have five or six different archetypes of light workers, but each one of those is necessary. Right. Um, because some work with the elements, some work with the earth, some work with, you know, making laws and inner leadership and whole management positions. Like, um, we're all here doing our own unique part. There's earth angels, right? There's those that are really connected to the, the earth angels or to, to the divine. There's the galactic channels that work with our star brothers and sisters, right? There's, there's many different types of light workers and, you know, you can get paid abundantly for these things. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I coach Tantra coaches. I coach astrologists, um, Reiki masters, um, medicine, women coaches, um, theta healers, doulas. Um, yeah, I coach, uh, card readers, medium psychics, um, EFT, uh, facilitators. Um, yeah, I mean, you name it. If it's, if it's a metaphysical energetic expertise, uh, you can support the planet immensely with your, with these gifts and it's energy medicine. And I, I coach a couple of people that own crystal shops and make candle magic and herbs and teas. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, and now more than ever, you know, a light worker, like being a light worker is definitely a trend for many people, but I truly believe it's actually not a trend. It's a soul assignment. And I feel that if you're called forth to, to help the planet in some type of way, you're a light worker and a big part of the light worker journey again is doing that own inner work to not care about what people think. 
And it's, it's, it comes in waves. It's not like one class and one book and one podcast and all of a sudden you're over it. I truly believe that we're students for life and it's always unfolding and loving ourselves is, is a lifelong journey, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing all of that. I did do your, uh, which archetype you are quiz and it was very fun. So I definitely recommend that to the listeners. I think that mine was the, I did it a few months ago or I don't remember, but I think mine was the earth earth warrior, which was very exciting. I'm a Capricorn. So I was like, yes, really I'm a Capricorn too. Yeah. yeah. Capricorn too. I was going to say you're probably an earth warrior. I was like, or a sensuality mystic, but I would say you're probably like between the two. Probably. I mean, all of the it, it's, it's fun to be able to play in the different ways of exploring a light as well. So, um, beautiful. Thank you for sharing all of that. And I think that, so I would love to touch more into, first of all, acknowledging that this is a real space that we're moving into and acknowledging the, the fact that there is a lot of that, um, projection of, Oh, you're crazy. And this is too woo woo. And I know for myself, when I first started to, you know, see and feel and hear energy at a different level. I didn't want to tell anyone and I didn't for a while. And and I think that that was a beautiful part of my journey as well. And from there, it probably took me about two years. That was before I fully started, you know, opening up and embodying. And then another year after that is where I'm, where I'm at now. And, um, my income tripled in that time. So it's also to say, to go back, you can make real money in this space. Um, and, and also be helping people in really profound ways. So I wanted to touch on that, but I also uh, wanted to kind of get your, your wisdom on how to um, navigate these uh, societal conditionings around feeling crazy or woo-woo. Yeah. And I'm so happy to hear that. And of course you did. Of course you tripled your income and every single person I've ever worked with that has made the pivot out of their soul sucking nine to fives into their soul's assignment has been abundantly blessed. And I truly believe once you really fall into your soul's assignment and you're doing God, God of Sam's work, you'll never be broke. Mm -hmm. And I've never in eight years of being in this business, guys, have ever met anyone that has gone back to corporate America, that's gone back to their old job or that ever regrets making the jump. Like it is literally, I had a girl who left her $350,000 a year, um, advertising job in Los Angeles. And we helped her make a hundred grand in her first year in business. And that's like a big deal, right. For like Mm -hmm. pivoting into, she opened her metaphysical shop and she started her Reiki and her Akashic and her crystal bed and all the things. And she's well on her way and has been featured on TV and magazine and all things. But like, that is of course, like, of course you did babe. like, absolutely. Of course. And that's possible for all of you guys. Um, So being called crazy, you know, I take it as a compliment because, you know, it's interesting, right? It's like I grew up with like a clinically crazy mother, right? Um, And I was always so scared to be called crazy, right? I was like, oh my God, being crazy is like the worst thing ever, right? Mm -hmm. And my mother um, suffers from borderline personality disorder, which is a cross between schizophrenic and bipolar, right? So it's, Mm -hmm. it's very challenging. One minute, everything's fine. And the next minute she's screaming and yelling and um, it, in public. It's just, it's just, it's, it's tough. It's it, your walk on eggshells. And I share that because I didn't want to be identified as crazy. Right. Cause like that was crazy. And I was always trying to make sense of crazy. Right. And I've had so many people say, stop trying to make sense of crazy. It's going to make you, it makes you crazy. Right. When you start to do that. And I think that we get to really take the power back from that word mm-hmm. and really know that, um, no one can make us feel any type of way. And if your dreams are crazy, well then so be it. And I'm pretty sure I know as a child, they were always telling me to get my head out of the clouds and get them down to reality. And I was like, no. And that's why I choose to surround myself with people who also have their head in the clouds, who also have big dreams where it's normal to have a podcast. It's normal to have a book. It's normal to be making seven figures. It's normal to be on a plane going wherever we want to go. It's normal to have clients from all over the world. It's normal to work from home in your PJs if you want to. Like that is normal. And of course, people would call you crazy if they don't have any physical evidence. So I don't want you to judge the people in your life that think your dreams are crazy. You just have to recognize they don't have any data. So if we brought someone from, it's so funny. I saw a meme today on Instagram is Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu. And it was like a press junket for like Charlie's angels 
one or something. And that came out a long, long time ago. Right. And I graduated in 1996 was probably around that time. I don't know, probably the two thousands and the internet came out in 2000, you guys. So, or 2001 is when the internet actually came out and she was talking to Cameron Diaz. It was probably in the early two thousands. And she was like, yeah, I don't know how to do emails. Cameron Diaz was like, I don't know how to check an email. I don't know how to do an email. Lucy was like, yes, you do. And Drew Barrymore was like, yeah, well, I'll show you how to check email. And I'll also show you how to do an iPod and an I and a, something else. And it was like crazy, right? That if you watch that, you're like, how do these chicks not know how to check email? Like that probably sounds batshit crazy to someone standing in 2021, right? Just like if we warped back to 1950 right now and we took our laptop and we tried to tell people that I was talking to you on the other side of the country, they would go, you're crazy, you're witches. And they'd probably start freaking out and run out of the room because they would have no data and no actual tangible evidence about phones, technology, computers, video cameras. I mean, they would be terrified, right? Like, what is this? That would seem crazy. Mm -hmm. Just like if I was on this cell phone and I jumped into 1950 and I'd be like, here, talk to your mom. They would be like, you're not talking to my mom. You're crazy because that doesn't compute, right? They jump timelines. So what you have to recognize is that many of you are jumping timelines, like back to the future style. You're jumping timelines so rapidly that your family can't keep up and that's okay. And that's why different relationships will leave your life like that. And if you're listening to this, you're probably realizing, oh my God, all of a sudden I had a job and I didn't all of a sudden I was best friends. And then we weren't all of a sudden I left, my husband's gone. And I mean, literally my whole life just got stirred up again, like real, real fast. This dude got up and out of my life that I moved across from LA to Texas for super abusive relationship. That's another podcast. And I have this amazing man that just like got dropped under my field. And it's like, we're perfectly aligned soulmates, like, holy shit. But like happened so fast and made your head spin. Like I jumped so many timelines in two months Mm. that like people are like, wait, what? Right. And so like you're either the people around you are either going to be the wind beneath your wings or they're going to be the weight on your wings. And they're not bad and they're not wrong. They're just on a different timeline. They're listening to a different radio station like Abraham Hicks talks about than you are. And so release the need to try and convince them you're not crazy and just go spend time with other people that are just as crazy as you are crazy to think that everything's possible. My kind of crazy, crazy to think that your dreams can be your reality. Great. Crazy to think that you can change the world. Great. Right? Like those are the people that you want to keep having around you to fan your flame because you're only as successful as the people you surround yourself with. And the people I surround myself with, they're playing big games in the world. Right. It's like, oh yeah, we're donating, we're putting 50 grand in a so-and-so's business. Like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to just go buy 10 K of crypto today. Okay. And I'm bringing that up because I grew up on food stamps guys. Like I grew up, like I, I literally grew up going to Kmart clothes. And so it's not the money. It's the mindset of the abundance and the quantum jump that like, I bought my first house this year. My mom and dad didn't even buy a home. Like that was a big deal for me a few months ago, but they were all talking shit about my crazy devil worshiping business. Right. And it's like, Oh, wow. I guess Amber's doing all right. You know, they still haven't read my book. They still don't ask questions. And it's because I'm no longer living my life for them anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm living my life because I answer to God, God, as I am, that's who I talk. That's who my boss is. And so you get to really start. and, And it can be scary at first when you're cleaning house, right? Like it can be scary. And I remember when I was really going through a big, like quantum jump ascension. I didn't want to hang around with any of my LA friends. I didn't want to go to the parties anymore. I kind of felt like a fish out of water in my life. I woke up one day and I was like, I don't like my clothes. I don't like my friends. I don't like my apartment. I don't like anything. I don't like my job, but like, what am I going to do now? And if you're in that place where you don't know where you want to be, but you know, this isn't it, you're going through your spiritual awakening and it's perfect. And you're going through your ascension and you're not crazy. You're just ascending right? Your palate is changing. You want more, right? Like you want to be around the people who also want more because com- comfortability, there's no growth. Like it's not just a bumper sticker. There's no growth in your comfort zones. We got to get really uncomfortable to actually change anything in our life, right? You don't get a flat abs by just like popping potato chips. Like you got to do all millions of crunches, right? Mm-hmm. So there is, there is some pain in order to create 
what it is that you want to create. And like I said, a couple years, a couple months back, like I was in another really dark night of the soul, you know, and I was in this death rebirth and doing all this grieving and all this ancestral work. I was like, what is happening? I had like 21 healings in a month. Like I was just, I was in it. And I was like, I don't have time to be sad. I don't have time to relive this program with another dude. Like I got to get to the root of what is happening and why I'm calling this into my field, because this is about me. This isn't about him. This is about me. Why am I letting this abuse? Why am I remaining in a relationship with a mentally ill guy? Why am I trying to convince everybody else in my life that he's not mentally ill? How about I just know that I know, right? And that's enough for me. Like, I know he was physically abusive. I know that he was verbally abusive. I know that he was emotionally abusive. And I know that he's mentally ill. So guess what? I just get to know that in my heart and not have to try and prove it to anyone and to do the good work to heal myself. So I don't attract that again. Yeah. Right. And take responsibility. And as soon as we learn that lesson, you guys, your life changes like that. Got the house, got the dude, got like, boom, like it was like one thing after another. Like when you learn that lesson, it's like you graduate and you upgrade to the next timeline. And so if you're feeling crazy, get excited because you're ascending. And that means that you are taking a quantum jump and jumping a timeline and life's about to get really awesome on the other side of this confusion. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing all of that. I really love this idea of reclaiming crazy. It's such this time of reclaiming all of these derogatory you know, words that I feel like patriarchy or society or whoever have, you know, spun like things like, which actually etymologically means wise woman, poor, holy right. woman, yeah. prostitute to, you know, lay down at the altar, to prostrate at the altar. So I love this idea. Uh, and I think that's super motivating and also healing for so many people listening. And I'm sure that so many people are also wanting more of this. I'd love to hear more about what you're offering and how people can, can get closer to, to your work. Thank you. And I'm so glad you brought up the witch. I feel like we need to jam on another part. Yeah, I'm a witch. I am, I am a whore. I am all those things. Um, 100%. And uh, Mary Magdalene was also called a foreigner prostitute. And we know there would have been no Yeshua without a Mary. So just say it. Um, yeah. So right now I am, um, I'm not sure when is this episode going to air? Do we know? So Ish. I actually think that it's going to come out probably in the next two weeks, either next Friday or the Friday after. So by the end of oh. September. Great. Yeah. Well, then we'll talk about Let Your Life Shine Live. So depending upon um, when this comes out, Let Your Life Shine Live, I have my seventh round. It's a throat chakra activation um, initiation course. And this course was created um, in a Kundalini yoga class. My guides told me that I needed to help light workers reach more people and find clients and to, to learn to own their voices. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And they're like, you know, basically gave me a stern talking to. And basically were like, you were on TV for 10 years and you know how to be vulnerable and authentic. And you've built a huge business without any marketing dollars or email sequences or landing pages or any stuff. Why don't you just teach light work, help light workers come out of the closet, right? Come out and own their woo-woo. And at this time, when I started my business, there was People weren't pulling cards online. People weren't playing with crystals. Like I was like one of the first people to be doing that. Not saying I'm that cool because all that stuff's been around for centuries. I'm just saying that people are like, that's out there. Amber's a witch, da, 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 da. you know, I'm like, yes, I am. But so back then people were really scared for people to know they were spiritual. And now it's like super trendy. So it's like way different, but people are still scared to piss people off. They're still scared to ruffle feathers. They're still scared to tell their parents, I will not get the, you know what? right? Um, or I will get them, you know what, or whatever it is, right? Whatever side of the coin you're on, a lot of people are in a place where they don't know how to claim their sovereignty and they don't know how to own their voice and they're scared and they're going back into um, compliance. They're going back into being slaves. They're going back. It's like we're going backwards in time, right? It's like the witch hunt all over again. It's like, don't, you know, don't tell anybody X, Y, Z are going to be punished or banned or deplatformed or whatever. So now more than ever, all of these old woundings are coming up. So let your light shine live. Um, this is round seven. And we've had over a thousand students graduate from around the world, 10, 20, hundred X their businesses, blah, blah, blah. Stood up to parents. It's really about breaking through your shame and your guilt and not giving a fuck and knowing how to show up on a podcast and not be worried about what's going to come out of your mouth. Like really learn how to be a divine channel so that you're being true to yourself. So then those that are also vibrating at your frequency can find you, mm -hmm. i.e. stop pretending, stop putting on masks, 
So let your light shine live um, is a six week course where we take you through growth work assignments each week that help you unlock your voice, help you own your power, help you release guilt and shame. Um, you get an accountability and a, and a support squad and um, a coach. And each week you get new assignments. And by the end, you are in a space where you look 10 years younger, you're vibrating the frequency and you come out of the spiritual closet and you can really learn to stand up for yourself in a way um, and release this fear of being called crazy or worried about what people think or um, being liked and people pleasing because a big part of being a light worker is to stop people pleasing and to really step in and, and shine your light bright. So all those that need you can find you and you can make the impact you want to come here to make. So whether you are a coach or not, or a healer, a light worker or not, or if you are a, literally just a person that wants to be able to speak your sexual needs in bed to your partner, or, you know, like really send your steak back at the restaurant because it's not cooked right. Right. Like if that's you, you probably have a noose around your neck. Like so many of us who were witches and who were killed for our gifts in the past. And it's time for you to unlock that. So let your light shine live sevens coming up, kicks off October 6th. You can fill out an application and you can get on a call with one of my, my, my team to find out if you're a fit for that. And then I have a year long program called the light worker Mastermind. Um, which is for spiritual-based entrepreneurs, those aspiring spiritual-based entrepreneurs and coaches, or those who are dabbling in that area and really want to kick it off, or those that want to take it to the next level, or those that know they want to serve, but they're dabbling and they don't really know, know, know where to begin, that's for you. And it's a year-long journey where you're mentored by me, you're, um, men, you're held alongside other spiritual-based entrepreneurs and aspiring ones, and you work on your business, not from a fifth dimensional way, but from a three not from a 3D way, but from a 5D way of ease and flow and alignment and working with the seasons and working in your feminine and throwing out everything people told you about building a business and really building it, building at your own pace with the guidance of your guides and the divine. And there's just uh, prayer circles and healing circles. And uh, we, we chat a couple times a month in groups and there's healing sessions. You get one-on-one -on -one with my healers and we have a retreat at the end of the year. And it's just, I created a mastermind that I wanted. I couldn't build my business with this hustle, grind, flow, money, goals, bullshit, pressure, email sequences, kill me now, funnel stuff. And I wanted um, to, to create something for others, spiritual based light workers that are like, I can't, I can't, my brain, I can't do all that. I just want to show up and be me. So those are pretty much my two main offerings. And I have a membership community that's only 33 bucks a month called Lightworker Academy, where we do full moon and new moon rituals. And you get mentored by me once a month and a bunch of guest experts and a book club and all things. And um, I think that that's pretty much it for now. <laughs> a membership, a year long um, program to be mentored by me and meet your soul family from all over the world and or um, the Let Your Life Shine Live live video course. And I think we're going to be creating a light, light worker archetype program, but stay tuned for that. And that will be coming down the pipe probably in like November. Amazing. These sound like incredible opportunities. Where can people find them or find you to get more information to sign up? AmberValdez.com or I am Amber Valdez. I am Amber Valdez. I am Amber Valdez on Instagram. And we have a text line. We'll put all that stuff in the show notes and um, which is a texty thing. We've got a telegram channel that's going to be kicking off too. So um, you can find me somewhere there, but She's I'm there. so, and, and if anything, take the quiz, you know, take the, are you a light worker quiz or the light worker archetype quiz? It's super fun. And, um, I think it'll help you learn a little bit more about who you are. And, um, yeah, there's always a bunch of free master classes and stuff in the links in my bio and Instagram. So take all the free content you can. And, and, um, I hope I can support you in some way, shape or form. And, I just hope you know that you matter, you're worthy and your light matters. And you didn't find this broadcast by, by chance spirit guided you here. So your guides got your back. Absolutely. I love to say that anyone that's listening to this podcast, this episode or any other episode, you know, you are a light worker and, and you're found this for a reason. So, uh, and thank you for being here to create that space for people to fully claim that, uh, last little question. Um, what awakens your arrows? What turns you on? What makes you feel erotically alive? This is my bonus zest. Well, I think I mentioned that I have been exploring and dating an incredible God man. Woo! And I have never been more turned on and more activated in my entire life. And I will say that you don't get to get this answer. Um, I also got to listen to the podcast. Um, 
I will say, I'm getting turned on just thinking about him right now, but <laughs> uh, I'm really turned on by, first of all, I'll give you a couple things. Foot rubs really turn me on. Butt rubs really turn me on. Like anytime, like my, my, my ass is caressed. Like, like I get really activated. Like that's it. I'm, I'm, it's over. Um, but what's really turning me on is like eye contact, mm. right? Like really deep, juicy eye contact. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really getting into, I'm getting into all of that. I feel so sexually free right now. Um, but yeah, just, just having a partner that can just like really just take you in and, and, and stare at you and just like be with you. And we're having like crazy tantric sex. You and I get to talk like after, like we are like activating some crazy vortexes of light that I've never experienced before. Like having a, a orgasm that just keeps going, but it's not like the normal orgasm. It's just like this pleasure orgasm that just is like, everything feels so good in your body and you're not even like coming, but you're just like feeling fully just like, waves of pleasure and like light and like electricity in your body. I'm just like, Oh my God, it's just, I want everyone to feel that way. I'm sure you do too, but I just can't believe that I didn't have that like in my relationships before. And I'm just a new bar, like never going to settle for that ever again. Like we get to have such juicy sex. We get to have, we get to just experience that. And it's just, such a bummer that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't fully received in my last relationships and didn't have partners that could, that could really go there or hold me in that and hold my erotic sexual goddess, you know, and my erotic woman. And, um, I think that everyone deserves that deserves a partner that can explore that with them and be in that with them. And if you don't have that, you get to have that. Cause I feel like that's against God. You know, if we don't, because mm-hmm. this is, we need everybody making love right now. We need everybody activating that chi on the planet, you know? Yeah, totally in resonance. That's really what this work is about. Seeing the integration of sexuality and spirituality and how can we use this life force to create this beautiful, abundant um, light world, uh, which is super exciting. So uh, thank you again, Amber, for joining me today. And I also want to express my gratitude to the listeners. Thank you once more for opening yourself up to the idea of sacred sexuality with so much gratitude and love. Have a sexy and spiritual day. And I'll catch you next week on Talk Tantra to me. Ta-ta. Mm-hmm.